Uh, this is one of my favourite pieces. I'm particularly proud of this piece of work because it's incredibly labour intensive. It's taken me a very, very long time to do. And I'm um, hopefully just going to wrap it up over the next few weeks now. Um, I've called it Yeats because I based it on the, the very famous poem of his called Easter. Uh, when I first heard the words from these, this poem, uh, it struck me as being particularly beautiful and meaningful. And I felt that he captured um, my idea of faith and identity, a goal of the higher self, the greater self, which I see as, as being the natural evolutionary path of humanity. Um, so yeah, I've taken his words and I've painted them throughout the wood and around that I've painted this maze which is like um, the, the maze the corridors would go through to, to try and attain this higher state of self. So within this maze I've captured um, images from everyday life, momentary images that stay in my mind or uh, some of the images will be more permanently resonating. And what I'll generally do is I'll paint whatever's currently on my mind, paint it out roughly, and then I'll go over it with several, several coats of paint. Because I'm painting on rough wood here, it will take several hours to get a really nice, neat line um, that you see throughout the picture. So what I'm going to do is, is going to record myself working on this piece for a few hours and then speed it up. Okay? Easter 1916 by W. B. Yeats I have met them at close of day, coming with vivid faces from counter or desk among grey eighteenth-century houses. I have passed with a nod of the head, or polite meaningless words, or have lingered a while and said polite meaningless words, and thought before I had done of a mocking tale or a jibe to please a companion, around the fire at the club, being certain that they and I but lived where motley is worn, all changed, changed utterly, a terrible beauty is born. That woman's days were spent in ignorant goodwill, her nights in argument until her voice grew shrill. What voice more sweet than hers, when young and beautiful she rode to Harriers? This man kept a school and rode our winged horse. This other, his helper and friend, was coming into his force. He might have won fame in the end, so sensitive his nature seemed, so daring and sweet his thought. This other man I had dreamed, a drunken, vainglorious lout. He had done most bitter wrong to some who are near to my heart. Yet I number him in the song. He too has resigned his part in the casual comedy. He too has been changed in his turn, transformed utterly, a terrible beauty is born. Hearts with one purpose alone, through summer and winter seem, enchanted to a stone to trouble the living stream. The horse that comes from the road, the rider, the birds that range from cloud to tumbling cloud, minute by minute they change. A shadow of cloud on the stream changes minute by minute, a horse hoof slides on the brim, and a horse plashes within it. The long leg more hens dive, and hens to more cocks call. Minute by minute they live, the stones in the midst of all. Too long a sacrifice can make a stone of the heart. Oh, when may it suffice? That is heaven's part, our part, to murmur name upon name, as a mother names her child when sleep at last has come on limbs that had run wild. What is it but nightfall? No, no, not night, but death. Was it needless death after all? For England may keep faith for all that is done and said. We know their dream enough to know they dreamed and are dead. But what if excess of love bewildered them till they died? I rout it out in a verse, MacDonna and MacBride, and Connolly and Pierce, now and in time to be, wherever green is worn, are changed, changed utterly. A terrible beauty is born. <laughs>